Hello. Hello. This is a reply to Pyro, on free will, his reductionist model, and quantum physics. I thought I would first try to explain my position on the topic of free will, and then go over some ideas I have about Pyro's reductionist model of will. I can see how that would be helpful. It seems the only thing limiting the number of ideas about free will is the number of people you ask. Precisely. Now for me, free will is nothing more than an illusion. What do you mean by that? To give an example, I once heard an argument in favor of free will that went something like this. If I'm in an airport preparing to go to a meeting, there's nothing forcing me to take the plane that I originally intended to take. I could if I wished, choose to take a flight at a later time, or indeed, go to the train station and travel by other means. The argument being, that I'm free to choose which method of travel I use. I see. I disagree with this conclusion. The argument is assuming, that I will go to the meeting. There doesn't seem to be the choice of not going. And, even if that choice were open to me, there would probably be ramifications to my decision, that would prohibit me from taking that choice. For example, my not going to the meeting could result in me being fired. Of course, no matter the ramifications, I could still take that choice, so some might argue, that that would be free will. My reply to this would be, choice does not necessarily mean freedom. How do you mean? The choices we make, are determined by two things. Strictly speaking, one thing, but let's split it into two for now. The first thing is the world in which we exist, and the second is the perceptions we have of that world. Our choices are limited by the circumstances we find ourselves in. In the airport example, there isn't the choice of teleporting to the meeting, because that technology does not exist. Likewise, we only have the choice of going by plane, because aeroplanes exist in the world we inhabit. But, aren't you still free to choose between the options available to you? Not necessarily. Ask yourself this. You might spend your whole life doing what you like to do, but at any time, did you choose to like the things you like? For example, in the airport argument, I might be at the airport, because I prefer to travel by plane rather than train. But did I have a choice to prefer one over the other? It seems to me, that the choices we make, are determined by our wants and desires, and those wants and desires are contingent on our personality, which in turn, is shaped by the structure of our brain and the experiences, that have helped form that structure. Furthermore, the number of choices we can make, are limited by the constraints imposed on us by the structure of the reality within which we exist. I don't see any room for a truly free will in that description. There is certainly will, but the freedom we associate with that will seems to be nothing more than an illusion being created by our brain. I suppose the question then becomes, how and why, does the brain create this illusion? I think to fully answer that question we will need a whole other video. But for now, I want to concentrate on this reductionist model of Pyro's. First of all, on the subject of beauty, and in the particular case, raised by Pyro of the beauty of a flower, I'm not so comfortable with the description of the beauty, being a component of the constituent parts of the flower. Of course, the molecular structure of its components, dictate the forms, that we will perceive, but the attributation of beauty for me is a wholly sentient process. The flower itself has no inherent beauty. It is our aesthetic and indeed social tastes, that confer such an attribute. But, that is an aside to the main point. The main point being, that Pyrrho has said he doesn't believe in emergent properties. For him, if we are expressing will, then there must be something inherent to our constituent parts, that when combined in certain ways, can produce what we call will. I can see how that might be the case. For instance, it can be argued, that the structure of a living cell is dependent upon the information inherent to the DNA within that cell. And, the information inherent to the DNA is dependent on the sequence of bases within that DNA. And so on down to the subatomic level. Indeed. However, to me this seems like a description of emergent properties. At least, in the way I understand emergent properties. 
If we take the example of coal and almond used by Pyro, we have two substances made from basically the same constituents, yet their individual properties are very different. Coal is a lot softer than diamond, and whereas diamond is transparent, coal is opaque. And these disparate properties have emerged from the differing structures of these substances. So, although I'm liking the reductionist model, I would contest his assertion of not believing in emergent properties. At least, my definition of emergent properties. Where then does this leave us with the origins of will? As I said, I think Pyro is onto something with the reductionist model. Although, I would be tempted to frame it in a different way. Especially with regard to the implications of quantum physics. For me, the apparent indeterminacy and randomness of the quantum world does not necessarily mean the system is actually indeterminate. If we consider the causes of Brownian motion, we have an example of apparent randomness being explainable in deterministic terms. I believe there is the possibility of a similarly deterministic explanation for the apparent randomness of the movements of subatomic particles. Of course, it is pure speculation on my part, but with the sheer incomprehensibility of quantum physics, the other side of the argument is just as speculative. So, to sum up so far. You now disagree on free will and agree on some form of reductionist model? The opposite of where we started. Pretty much, yes.